afternoon. Today we're going to be making Chili's Copycat Salsa. It's a salsa recipe that tastes very much like the salsa that you get at the Chili's restaurant and is very popular. Um, so it's a very simple recipe. The reason that we're starting with that in class is because it will make you more familiar with measuring your jobs in the kitchen and just how the kitchen functions in this class. Okay, so the first thing I would do is all members will go over, make sure that their hands are clean. You wanna scrub your hands using the hand soap on the wall for approximately 20 seconds or so, making sure that cleaning everywhere and rinsing well. You're gonna dry your hands on the colored towel. The reason we use the colored towel for hands is because that way we'll always remember that our white towel is only to be used for drying dishes. Okay, you wanna use a separate towel for dishes than you use for your hands to stop the spread of germs. Okay, so the first step in our copycat salsa is to get ingredients from the prep table. Today's ingredients are whole tomatoes, peeled, uh, diced and fire roasted with green chilies, tomatoes, diced jalapenos, garlic salt, ground cumin, sugar, and a little bit of cilantro, and a small amount of yellow onion. Okay, so the first direction is to get ingredients from the prep table. After that, you're gonna measure the jalapenos and put them in the food processor and pulse three times, okay? We need two and a half teaspoons of jalapenos. So we go here, the amounts are there. So I will need two of these and one of these of the jalapenos. Okay, my food processor is right here. Just gonna measure them straight from the can. and they can be a rounded teaspoon. It doesn't have to be exact. It's not like baking. In baking, your measurement amounts need to be much more exact. In cooking, the amounts are just more of a guideline. Okay, so then you're gonna just pulse a couple of times. You fit it onto the food processor right here and you'll hear it click in. And you're gonna, it will just start to get them to chop a little bit. Okay, we're gonna take the lid off. Okay, after that, it says dice the onion and measure an eighth of a cup and add to the food processor. Okay, so here's your onion. Okay, you've already gotten a small amount from the prep table. An eighth of a cup is not a lot. And what you wanna do is take off your knife guard and you want to just slice it Make sure that you're making the claw with your knife hand. Okay. You want to dice it up small enough so that you can fit it into the measuring cup. If it is a large piece of onion, you won't know whether or not this is the eighth of a cup. Okay, so you're just gonna use your hands. And I think I'm pretty close here. Well, maybe a little bit over. About like that. You're gonna add it to your food processor and you're gonna pulse a couple more times. Okay, next step, and you can take whatever onion you have left over and just throw that away. That's why you have a trash can right in your kitchen so that you can throw that away. Any extra? Okay, next step. You're going to, in the food processor, add the rest of the ingredients one at a time as the sous chef measures them. Okay, so the sous chef is going to place the food processor on the scale. Okay, now before you turn the scale on, you want to place the food there. That way, when you turn it on, it's gonna zero out for the weight of the food processor. 
So it says zero ounces. So the first ingredient you're going to add is you're going to add approximately seven to eight ounces of the large peeled tomatoes. And you can see the scale changing amounts as you're adding those. You can add a little bit of the juice as well. Not too much, but a little bit is fine. Okay, so right now I am at six and three quarters. So either a very small one, like a very small tomato might be able to make it. There we go. I'm at about seven and three, 37, seven point three seven ounces. So that's about where I want to be. Then I'm going to take my fire roasted tomatoes, and I'm gonna use half of the can. So you can just eyeball this, okay? But again, if you wanna be exact, the can is 14.5 ounces. So it would be about seven and a quarter ounces that you'd wanna add. So you, if you press this button right here, you'll zero it out. Now it's zero, and it's gonna start your count again. Okay, so if I get to seven, and a quarter, I should be at about half of the can. And you can do it either way. You can either measure, or you can just kind of eyeball where seven. That's almost perfect. Okay, maybe a little bit too much, so I'll put a little bit back. There we go. And again, doesn't have to be perfect. Just close. All right, after that, you're going to be adding your garlic salt and your ground cumin. Your garlic salt is a quarter of a teaspoon. So you go here over to the quarter teaspoon. Okay, and you want to make sure that it's fairly level. And I'm just going to sprinkle that around. And then we need a quarter teaspoon of the ground cumin. Again, just making sure that it's close. And then I need an eighth of a teaspoon of sugar, which seems kind of odd to add sugar to a salsa recipe because salsa has more of a savory taste, but it just gives it, it just takes a little bit of the acidity off. And that's it. You're adding all of your ingredients. Now they're in your food processor. Now, you need to decide in your group whether you want your salsa chunky or smooth. If you want it chunky, you would pulse maybe twice, maybe three times. If you want it more smooth, where you don't have chunks of tomato and chunks of onion, you would hold it down. About like that, okay? After you're finished, you open this up. You're gonna take this out. This can go into your sink to be washed. Now, this is a blade. This is the food processing blade, just like a knife. In fact, it might be a little sharper than a knife. So as with a knife, you never wanna set it into the soapy water. You always wanna set that right next to the sink so that the kitchen steward knows when it's there and they can take it apart and wash it while keeping it in their hand. Okay, so here is your salsa. So then you would take your boats and these will have you know you can use some of the things that you might want to use salsa for are scrambled eggs um, chips and salsa um, for this you would put your chips in here and you'll get those from your prep table over there but before you do that you're just going to add your salsa to each of the boats You try to just divide it up pretty evenly. And then after that's finished, there's only one more small step before you can go to your table and enjoy your chips and salsa. Now, one thing that can vary in the recipe is the spice, the hotness of the salsa. Some people prefer a really spicy salsa. Other people prefer a more mild salsa. So the ingredient that you would vary in that case is the uh, jalapeno. If you want more spice, you would add more jalapeno. If you want less spice, you would add less jalapeno. You're just 
gonna take a little bit of cilantro here, not too much, and you're going to just rinse it and pat it dry using a paper towel. And then you can again use your knife And the cilantro in this recipe adds flavor, but it's more used just for garnish, which means it's used to kind of make the dish look better when it's served. Okay, so then you're gonna take it, I'll just put it in my hand here, and you're just gonna garnish the salsa like that. Maybe get rid of the rest. And that's it. It's as easy as that. You've made Chili's Copycat Salsa.